In this video, we're going to have a look at the parabola in standard form. In the previous video, we had a look at the equation of the parabola given in turning point form. In this equation, there's a bracket that can still be multiplied out and then simplified. If we do this simplification, you will form a trinomial, which is then the standard form equation for the parabola. Here we have an example of an equation in turning point form. And in the previous video, we saw that the minus p and q value indicates the turning point. If I now go and simplify the equation by firstly squaring the bracket to get x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus the 1, and then add the two constant values, you will end up with the standard form of y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3. Let's now focus on this simplified standard form of the equation. In this equation, we cannot see the turning point anymore. But you will see that the constant value at the end now corresponds with the y-intercept of the graph. So, when an equation is given in the standard form of y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, you can immediately from that read off the y-intercept. And the c value also still indicates the vertical translation. To calculate the x-intercepts, we are still going to substitute the y value with 0. To determine the turning point, we are going to have a look at three different methods. In the standard form, the a value will still indicate whether the graph is concave upwards or concave down, and it also still indicates how close the arms of the parabola will be to each other. But how do we determine the horizontal translation by looking at this standard form equation? For this, we're going to have a look at the signs of the a and the b value in the equation. In the sketch, we have two positive parabolas. Both a values are positive. For the blue function, the b value is also positive. And when both signs are the same, the translation will be to the left. When looking at the green function, you will see that the b value is negative. This means that the a and the b value have different signs, and when that happens, the graph will translate to the right. In the next two functions, both of them are negative parabolas, with the a value being a minus. For the function on the left-hand side, the b value is also negative. And because these two signs of a and b are the same, the graph moved to the left. The graph on the right has a negative a value and a positive b value, and because the two signs are different, the graph moved to the right. Let's go and have a look at an example of where we are given a standard form equation and we need to sketch the parabola. Example. Sketch the following function and indicate the intercepts of the axes and the turning point. Here we are given the equation in the standard form, and as we've just seen, we can then immediately say that the y-intercept will be at the coordinate 0 and minus 9. If you wanted to get a rough idea of what the sketch would look like, you would start with your mother graph and then move this 9 units down, as indicated by the constant value at the end. Then we just saw that to determine the horizontal movement, we have to have a look at A and B's signs. In this case, they are both positive which means they are the same, and then the graph will move in the negative direction. To determine the two x-intercepts, we start off by changing the y-value in the equation to a 0. Next, I can divide the whole equation by 3 to simplify the equation. Then I can factorize to get to x is either minus 3 or x is 1. Although we still need to determine the turning point coordinate, we already have an idea of what this graph should look like. We know that the first x-intercept is negative, the y-intercept is negative, and the next x-intercept positive. 
To determine the turning point coordinate, we have three different methods. The first option is to use the fact that this graph is symmetrical around that turning point. This means that the two x-intercepts are the same distance from this axis of symmetry. The distance between minus 3 and 1 is 4 units, which means that this x value of the turning point is 2 units to the right of minus 3 and 2 units to the left of 1. Therefore, the x value of the turning point will be at minus 1. And now we can go and determine the y value. To calculate the y value for this graph that goes with an x of minus 1, I will substitute all the x values in the equation with minus 1. This will give me a y value of minus 12. This means that the coordinate of the turning point is minus 1 and minus 12. So the first method that you can use to determine the x value of the turning point is to determine the middle of the two x intercepts. For the second method to determine the x value of the turning point, we are going to use a formula. This formula is derived from the first method we did. To determine the x value of the turning point, you can use the formula minus b divided by 2a. In our example, the b value is 6 and the a value is 3 and now we can simply substitute. We'll have minus 6 over 2 times 3 and that will give us minus 1. To get the y value of the turning point, we still substitute minus 1 into the equation and once again get minus 12. So our turning point is again minus 1 minus 12. The third method to determine the turning point is using completing the square and we'll have a look at that in the next video.